All right, man, peace. So as we know by now, uh, Ray Lewis, as well as his quote-unquote friend, Shannon Sharp, have been pulled into the subtext of the whole Colin Kaepernick protest psychological operation, uh, attempt at social engineering. And of course, it's been amplified by the injection of President Donald Trump and his comments about the NFL players. So now let's see how a lot of the antipathy between Ray Lewis and Shannon Sharp gets escalated when Ray decides that he's not going to take it anymore. For real, right now, what, what, what did we learn? It's the first time I think I ever walked on a football field and none of the game was about football. I've never, JB, boom. And I, you were in London. Dude. I was in London now. Yeah, but what do you mean by that? Well, well, in London. I was in London. Well, let me chime in before Ray gives his perspective. The reason why Ray is saying that, you know, this is the first time that he stepped on the field and it wasn't about football is because many of these people are starting to notice the same things that I've been telling you, brothers, for a long time now. And that is that the NFL and other sports leagues, but the NFL in particular, is being used as a vessel for social engineering. OK, people like Colin Kaepernick. They're agents of chaos. And I've actually heard uh, television personalities using that phraseology now. All of a sudden, people are using terms like agents of chaos and chaos. And you're going to see Ray Lewis start to use it because people are starting to see the same things that I've been telling you brothers about for a very long time now. It's very obvious. It's what's known as the Hegelian dialectic, pressure from above and pressure from beneath to, you know, to reach a um a a pre a predetermined goal and now it's starting to become more obvious to regular people so by the time we got this news about what started happening back here in the jail yeah, in the states what started happening with the president and he said this he said that and i'm listening to everybody rambling and i'm like what's wrong like what's and I'm looking. I'm right. This was right before the, the team took absolutely. The field. That's when we found all the conversation. All the conversations. All the conversations was not about football. And of course, they're not about football because that's that was the point of injecting the socialist protests into the NFL. Now everybody is a revolutionary, quote unquote. Now you must pick sides. Now you see all of these people on the internet. Ray Lewis now is a uh, is a provocative figure. He's a polarizing figure. Right. Why? Why is he not a polarizing figure? Well, you know what? I'll get to that a little later as we go along. And I'm sitting there saying to myself, wait a minute, you're about to go run into somebody full speed. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I would think your mind should be dialed in. Yes, I, I agree with you, Ray. Their mind should be dialed in, but their minds cannot be dialed in. Because they've already been manipulated. They basically already had a certain subconscious portion of their mind triggered, both by the liberal black uh, internet revolutionaries, the, uh, the woke committee, as well as Donald Trump, who gave them that little push. You know, like the Joker, uh, Heath Ledger, when he played the Joker in The Dark Knight, he says certain people, they just need a little push. Talking about Harvey Dent, right, a.k.a. Two-Face. You know, who does Two-Face represent? Right. Or what does Two-Face represent? Two-Face represent or Two-Face's character. He represented a, um, a, a, a phenomenon that I've spoken about numerous times on this channel as well. And that's what's known as uh, disassociative identity disorder or multiple personality disorder. Right. Or even if you want to go to another phraseology, bicamerality of the mind. Um, basically, that's referring to, you know, people who are who are hearing voices, right, that trigger certain conduct, okay? And that's what's going on with a lot of these NFL players. They're being basically put under remote control. They don't even know what they're doing or why they're doing it, right? They're just doing it. And it's, it's very, very interesting. This is a, 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 a wonderful, um, this is a wonderful example of psychological manipulation. But it's not. It's not, and, and JB, I think out of all things, Boomer, that's what I learned, that it's the first time in the history of me going to a football game and watching nothing be about football. Wow. Wow. Yeah, we're keeping that in mind. You know what? Sure. 
Yes. Well, I wouldn't say it's the first time that I've seen that in the sports world because we saw an inkling of that with uh, the Eric Garner issue in the NBA when they had the I can't breathe T-shirts. But as we all know, the NBA is a woke league. They're a woke organization or association uh, led by a woke commissioner, that being Adam Silver. But, you know, it's just very, very funny how easily the entire league was was pushed over into a point where even the owners got involved in a protest, almost as if it was a ritual. Hmm. You know what, that's an effective uh, play off of, if you will, what Ray was saying he saw and heard over there in London. But but Phil and Boomer, we all dealt with this topic ad nauseum on Sunday. Uh, the pundits everywhere certainly did. Ray brings a very unique perspective to this because as an ex-player, he was overseas there in London. And you've already set the stage with how much the conversation was about everything but football. But you seemingly, from the optics got caught up in this as well, too, because, in fact, you did take a knee when you are allegedly on record as saying that you never would. Talk about Actually, what two happened. knees. And that's the point. Let's make, let's make sure. You hear people saying, oh, he took a knee. I absolutely not. Did not take a knee. I walked onto the back. Hold on, let's be clear. When you say you hear people say. People, you hear people. You hear Shannon Sharp going out there talking about, I dropped on a knee and... <laughs> Let me say this, because they said a lot there. Um, the thing with Ray Lewis, and I mentioned this earlier in, in previous videos that, I, that I've that i made revolving around him. And once again, and I've said this numerous times too, brothers, I make videos about these different characters because I can tell, I can see, because I pay very close attention to these narratives. I can tell storylines as they're building. Okay. I can tell storylines as they're building with these different television characters and how they're used uh, either, wing, either willingly or unwillingly or knowingly or unknowingly. I can tell when there is going to be a narrative built up around some of these quote unquote analysts. And Ray Lewis was somebody who was very obvious. Like, you know, I highlighted the issue with him in Ness Nitty. I highlighted how he was a pawn being used by, in my opinion, being used by Jim Brown. And even the owner of the Ravens, Steve Bashotti, Ray Lewis is a pawn. And pawns oftentimes are very sincere. And that's what makes them pawns. Is because they think that, that life is only what they see. And they normally see things at a very basic two-dimensional level. Which is why it's so easy to use them as pawns. Because the people who pawn them out, uh, the manipulators, they just tell them what they want them to think. So that they can execute what they need them to execute. Okay. And let me say this quickly. This is why I stated in one of those videos that, you know, I would advise Ray Lewis. And it seems like he has also come to this uh, determination, this understanding that he should extricate himself from any and all race talk and racial conversation from here on out. Because Ray Lewis is not a complex man. He's not a particularly wise or shrewd man, but he is very sincere. And that's a very, very dangerous combination, man. That's a very dangerous combination in the environment that he's in right now. He thought he was going to go into NFL broadcasting and bring all of his zeal and his enthusiasm and his exuberance that he brought to the locker room into the NFL broadcasting world and that he was going that it was going to be easy. He didn't think that he was going to have to speak about societal issues to this depth and uh, with this level of complexity where he would have to walk through a minefield every broadcast. And if he said the, the wrong thing in the wrong way, quote unquote, he was going to have one faction call him a coon or another faction call him a, 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 a unpatriotic. This is what he's caught up in now. And this is why, once again, I refer to the liberal blacks on the Internet as the pro-black mafia. Because they will go out of their way to assassinate people's character and try to have them destroy these affluent so-called blacks if they don't do what they think these people should be doing. And this is what is happening to Ray Lewis right now. He's caught in between a rock and a hard place. Now they've started a petition in Baltimore stating that he should have his statue torn down. If I was him, 
I not only would not care, I would encourage the, the statue to be torn down because uh, being quote unquote religious, as Ray Lewis alleges to be, he should not want to have any idols built up to glorify him. He should not want any idols built up, period. So he should never have agreed to have that statue put up in the first place. You know, a lot of times there's a lot of positivity that can emanate from situations that people would like you to believe are negative. Right. Ray Lewis seems to be a very strong and convicted person in his beliefs. Right. Whether you agree with him or not. This is why, once again, he should extricate himself because, you know, the, the environment that he's in right now is a um, <laughs> it is a tempestuous environment. It is a environment. It, it is an environment filled with diabolical people with all types of motives and agendas that are not what they'd like you to appear on television or that are not what they'd like you to think they appear as on television. Right. A lot of these talking heads are getting on TV and talking about race and they want you to think that they feel a certain way about race. And it's really just to advance their media career. And Ray Lewis, once again, seems to be a very sincere guy who is, once again, not very complex. He's rather he's pretty much a simpleton, which makes him a pawn. And I, and I don't say that to be insulting. Ray means well. He's just in the wrong. He's in the wrong arena right now because all these people that he's dealing with are professional double talkers. And this is about, oh, I sat in the chair next to him and, and I said I would never do this. And I still didn't. Let me rewind it back to where he starts talking about Shannon. I didn't do it. And, oh, he took a knee. I absolutely not. Did not take a knee. I walked onto the Hold on, let's be clear. When you say you hear people say. People, you hear people. You hear Shannon Sharp going out there talking about I dropped on a knee and... And let me say this. He d he didn't um, kneel. And I've I've seen certain people say, oh, well, Ray Lewis is going back on what he said. No, he, no, he didn't. He didn't kneel. Right. And please understand, I have no dog in a race. All right. Because I know how simpletons are. Oh, well, you must be a Ray Lewis fan. You know, whenever you don't whenever you don't uh, co-sign what all the other sheep are running with on the Internet, they claim that you're a fan of this person because you don't want to castigate the, the person that, you know, that everybody is, is cyber lynching. No, I, I don't get involved in a mob mentality. I'm above that. I hover way above that. All right. Ray Lewis did not get down on one knee to, to protest. He got down on two knees to pray. That was very, very obvious and very clear. Now, the mistake that he made was he associated himself with a protest, even though he was not protesting. He held arms and clasped arms with people who were protesting, which is something that he should not have done. But it's very obvious when you look at him that he was not protesting. He was praying. Me and this is about, oh, I sat in the chair next to him and, and I said I would never do this and I still didn't do it. I'm watching young kids just confused. Everybody confused. Yes, that is what that is. That is what it means to be an agent of chaos. You promote confusion. All right. Like I've said, all that protest stuff, that is the new fad. That's the new Internet fad. All right. Oh, let's let, let's all look at. The NFL pregame to see who's going to get down on one knee so we can see who's quote unquote down for the cause. Like I said, 90 percent of those guys were not even interested in the Colin Kaepernick protest until Donald Trump said what he said. So you're really not in favor of Kaepernick. You're really just more interested in trying to um, and trying to rebuff Trump and his sentiment. Which really shows that you're more into Trump than the actual cause that Kaepernick alleges to be about. Which makes you a meathead and easily manipulated. Nobody don't know what they're talking about. What am I do if I'm a stand up? If I'm a grab hands? If I'm an interlock? I'm, what am I gonna do? So I walked away, JB, and I didn't drop on one knee in order to protest. Boom! I dropped on two knees, both knees, so I can simply honor God in the midst of chaos. And right off, you see, he said, so he could simply honor God in the midst of chaos. All right. And for those of you who don't know. Uh, the word chaos uh, etymologically comes from the word in the Babylonian kawas, which was how you would pronounce the name of Cush. OK, is what it all goes back to. All right. Why is that? Because Cush is the man who led the apostasy against the teachings of the of that were uh, stipulated to mankind 
on how to worship and adhere to the laws of the Most High, who was teaching the peoples of the world to adhere to the laws of the, of the Most High. Shem was. Okay? So Cush led the apostasy. He is the one who I've said numerous times uh, created most of the ritualistic practices that we know today as masonry, right? Which really is just the modern day manifestation of the Babylonian mystery school system, right? We also you know it's, it's also hidden in things like Buddhism and Hinduism and the and Catholicism. Okay, they all come from the teachings of Kush, who was the mastermind behind the whole thing. Once again, the word chaos comes from the name Kush. All right. He was known as the as the uh, the man of conf uh, the confounder. The person who initiated the confusion at the Tower of Babel. OK. Wait, hold on. So you are passionately making this point, which, by the way, you were very passionate in our production meeting as well. So put a little bit of context on this. The reason you mentioned Shannon, meaning Shannon Sharp, your yeah. former teammate, why are you mentioning him? He, what does he have to do? He goes out and tells somebody why he's so disappointed in me. In you. Yeah, absolutely. First of all, I'm 42 years old with six kids. I'm a grown man. Look at how Ray is, is gesturing with his hand. Even though he's a grown man and a former NFL superstar linebacker, those hand gestures is what you is, are what you see from who? The black female. Okay? Please understand, Ray Lewis was raised by a single mother. So... But let me say this also about Ray Lewis. He's done a great job of trying to do his best to embody manhood, despite the fact that he had no no real father figure in his life. All right. So let me give him that much credit. Like I said, I'm not one of these guys who's going to come uh, on the Internet and give a two dimensional flat appraisal of a, of a man. Right. There's always complexities and nuances there that have to be analyzed and brought forth. I'm not one of these guys who's going to throw, you know, all these guys are so pro-black, but they they're always so ready to call somebody a coon. You know why? Because they're embarrassed at their own cowardice. All the revolutionaries on the Internet, niggas could have been started the race war, but they're not going to do it. All right. Because they really just want a hug from the damn white man. They want that same hug that Ness Nitty sent uh, Ray Lewis as getting from Steve Bashotti. All right. That's what most of these Internet niggas want. The ones who, who are more interested in seeing how many different ways they could type the word coon, Ray Coon Lewis and all this stupidity. All right. Everybody knows what Donald Trump's address is. Everybody knows the White House address. You don't see no niggas down there getting ready to pop off. So to be disappointed in me, it really like sparked me. And now all of these people are going off his sound bites of how he's so shocked. That I dropped on the knee to pro And you know good for Ray Lewis for finally standing up to Shannon Sharp Because Shannon's been talking a lot of shit for a long time On Undisputed um, He's been you know he's been really getting caught up In his uh, new network tele television persona As a leader on, on racial discussions uh, He loves his new position I've stated this numerous times He also loves his position as the intermediary between the uh, sports media and Colin Kaepernick. He loves that he got, has a little inside track on Colin. And I've stated numerous times already that it was very clear that Shannon's devotion to Colin Kaepernick has led to a disintegration in the relationship between him and Ray Lewis. Why is that? Because he's spoken numerous times uh, pertaining to comments that Ray has made. Uh, and his comments have denoted that he's made no effort to contact Ray over the phone, even though Ray is supposedly like a brother to him, quote unquote. Right. Shannon loves the attention. And Ray is going to say a lot of incisive things about Shannon Sharp that need to be said that I've stated already. To protest. Really? You got my phone number, brother. A friend. A friend. A friend picks up the cell phone. Thank you, sir. Agreed. Oh, and say, bro, what was your intention? What were you doing? You saw my mouth moving. I asked and your mouth moving was because praying. Now, just I, this makes me ask you a real, a serious question. And he obviously was praying. Like I, don't, I don't know why people are trying to act like he wasn't praying for. I guess because you know, once again, uh, so-called black people with their mob mentality. Or I should say, let me specify, the internet revolutionary so-called blacks with their mob mentality. 
They're just looking for elements of, of uh, vulnerability in Ray Lewis that they can try to capitalize on. Maybe to get views on their, on their videos or to just talk about um, Ray Lewis being a coon. You know, no, you, you know who the coons are? The coon is that nigga in your building lobby selling drugs. Right? The coon is that nigga whose album you just downloaded yesterday. Talking about how many broads he's pimping and how many dudes he shot and how much drugs he sold. And the nigga never even had never was barely scared to step outside of his damn uh, apartment when he was growing up in the hood. If, he, if he's even from the hood. All right. Those are the coons. But, you know, nobody calls them out. You know, the coons are the ones that's getting their faces tatted up and talking about how they how they, you know, they doing Molly and they, you know, they giving drugs to some chick at a party and yada, yada, yada. Those are the real coons. All right, Ray Lewis is just a, <laughs> Ray Lewis is just a simpleton who's uh, gotten caught up in mass hysteria. Question: I have First Amendment rights myself. We got people standing, we got people bowing, we got people don't even want to respect the flag. If we want to make it right, make it through two ways. You can only stand or pray. We used to have it like that. And chose to pray. So to be clear about this. You didn't drop on one knee as you said you wouldn't do because you disagreed with that form of protest, but you dropped on two knees. I never will agree with that. Mm -hmm. So you And that's his right. That's his right. It's more consistent to be a so-called proud American and not agree with protesting the flag than it is to be a, a, a so-called revolutionary and say that you want equality from the people who oppress you. I mean, what part of the... What type of equation is that? That a that a people that you allege you despise because they have oppressed you for four hundred years are suddenly going to embrace you, and you would and you would want that embrace. If somebody oppressed you, held you in a you know in their basement for five years, chained up, and they and they suddenly decided to let you go, would you want to embrace them? So why would you want the embrace of somebody who has? Uh, kept you in confinement and oppression for 400 years. No, allegedly. I mean, I'm just going by what the so-called pro-blacks state. Allegedly, this is what they want. They want equality, supposedly, right? And equal and equal rights. And they don't want white people to oppress them. They want. They just want white people to hear them out. That's what the pro-black niggas claim, right? Once again, if somebody kidnapped you and held you in their basement for five years and made you their servant. And then said after five years, OK, nigga, you can go. Are you going to turn around and hug them and give them a kiss and say, OK, we're equal now? Or are you going to, you know, are you going to want them dead? So if that's the case for somebody who had you for five years, why is it that y'all keep begging for equality from people who you know from people who you claim held you in captivity for 400 years? Hmm. So you maintain that I do too much with the military. I do too much for cops. I do too much meeting with high-level officials. What Ray Lewis is basically saying, you know, for people who are going to try to take what he said and, and turn it into cooning or claim that he's, you know, he sold out to the cops or to the military. What he's basically saying is that he meets with these factions on the other side so that they can show some more respect to the, you know, so-called blacks who state that they're being oppressed by the police. That's what he's saying. And I've said this numerous times already about Ray Lewis. Um, Ray Lewis has done far more for the so-called black community and Shannon Sharp has ever done. I, I Look, I challenged somebody to provide one photo of Shannon Sharp being out there amongst the people in any protests, uh, rally, whatever you want to call it. Just provide one. Google Shannon Sharp. You know what you're going to see? Him with his white girlfriend or him or, or him working out or playing football. Right. Or, or on Undisputed. That's all you're going to see. Shannon Sharp comes and he talks shit uh, with Skip Bayless for two and a half hours a day. And then he goes and works out and then he goes to his house and just, uh, you know, eats kale and, and, and baked turkey or oh, baked chicken. Whatever the hell his ass eat. Trying to fix the problems in these neighborhoods. I do way too much, JB. And I just want to get into this and, and let everybody understand why, JB. When I was 10 years old, I watched my mother walk up to me with two bloody eyes from being beaten and I couldn't understand why and I didn't have a father I didn't have nobody to come and say son it's all right and I saw my mother praying one day and I said mama why are you praying on your knees 
She say, son, when you got chaos in your life, this is where you go. And all I knew to do, not just on Sunday, but if you follow my track record, you've seen me fall on my knees in Denver. I will say that, and that's true. He's always falling on his knees and prayed. And let me say this, though. Um, when you face hardship, yes, you must pray, but you also must actionize a plan. The Lord will assist you in the plan that you, action, that you actionize and that you formulate when you turn to him as well. Okay? But you also must have a plan. It must be both. You can't just pray and, and hope that the Most High is going to give you everything. He has to show that you're actually mobilizing. You saw me fall on my knees in New England. When I got to New Orleans, I fell on my knees. Because my mother taught me what I should do in the midst of chaos. So when a brother attacks me talking about I took a knee on my country, I fight for my country. I fight for my country. And the only thing I would love to just ask, like, I got all these former teammates saying all of this, but was you disappointed in me when, when I walked with Trayvon Martin family? I took both of my sons, and I wanted them to see what walking with injustice felt like, because I had lived it. Was you disappointed in me when Mike Brown was killed in St. Louis? I went to, I went to St. Louis and gave jobs. Yes, he did do that. Once again, uh, Ray Lewis, Ray Lewis's platform has never been that Colin Kaepernick is wrong. All he stated was that he did not agree with the, you know, with the process that Colin Kaepernick chose to embark on, which was based in discordianism and the promotion of chaos. All right. Once again, Colin Kaepernick is a pawn of the socialists. He's a pawn of the so-called Black Lives Matter, really the Black Lesbians Matter movement. That's what he is. OK, so, you know, you guys are going to find out when I say you guys, I'm really talking to the um, the uh, Internet revolutionary pro blacks. You guys are going to find out how wrong you are, as usual, but you won't admit it. You'll just move on to the next bullshit movement. But uh, Ray Lewis, once again, has been involved in far more um, actionizing for the so-called black community than Colin Kaepernick or Shannon Sharp. Were you disappointed me then? Shannon, were you busy? Were you busy when Trayvon Martin family was walking? Because I didn't see you there. Were you busy when Mike Brown was killed? Because I didn't see you there either. Yeah, because his ass wasn't there. He was, you know, he was uh, doing push-ups. I live black. I'm from the streets. I've been doing this 22 plus years, fighting injustice. Ray, I'm asking a very obvious yeah. question. And, and let me say this. See, now, Ray Lewis has gotten himself caught up in that woke vortex. All right. The woke vortex is the, is trying to prove things to Internet niggas and all that other shit. He's caught up in that Twitter shit. All right. Now, all of a sudden, he wants to prove to so-called black people how black he is. That's the wrong move. All right. That's why he never should have gotten involved in the first place. The last thing that you want to get involved in is trying to make a two dimensional nigga into a three dimensional nigga. It's not going to happen. OK, that's something that you're born with. You, and, you know, a three dimensional person is has been thinking three dimensionally their whole life. They come across a higher level of thinking and they and their brain just gets activated. A two dimensional nigga is going to be two dimensional their whole life. The last thing you should be worried about are these people on the Internet and what they're talking about. These Internet revolutionaries. Right. Their idea of being pro black is calling everybody a coon. And putting up the the, the you no know, the fist emoji five hundred times and a bunch of exclamation points to hell with them. So you you're pained to the core that people would question your character and yeah. integrity and commitment to this. You can't you can never question. Boomer, we pray before we come out the locker room. True or false? True. Phil, we pray before we come out the locker room. True. So why not pray in full stadiums? And that's what the two knees represent. That's what the two knees represent. I'm no, I'm no standing hook and protesting because Trump can't bother me what he said, I, no matter how bad it was. I agree with that. All these, all these so-called strong pro-blacks and uh, you know, revolutionaries, they got so triggered by, you know, and they get so triggered by everything that Trump says. And then they try to project that on everybody else who doesn't get triggered. Oh, you must be pro-Trump. No, nigga, you're pro-Trump. 
because all somebody got to do is mention his name and your ass is ready to do a backflip and try to front like you so upset. Nobody cares about you niggas and your anti-Trump bullshit. He's not going anywhere. All right. So I guess you're just going to be mad for four years. The only way he's going to get removed is if he starts really fucking with people's money. OK. Nobody cares about you niggas and your unity bullshit. Nobody cares. All right. And the reason why so-called blacks are at the bottom is because they're more concerned with unifying with the other races than building a culture and creating some form of economic empowerment within themselves, which is not going to happen anyway. All right. As I've already stated, our people are only going to uh, rise from the ashes. They're not going to rise f uh, while, while this society is still, um, you know, in a state of, of, of functionality. All right. But it's a brotherhood that I have to lead young men. They're watching a leader who once came before them. So what do I do? I can't grab an arm with them because that means I'm mad at what Trump said. I ain't in the league no more. I agree with that. He did not allow himself to be um, manipulated by Donald Trump's statements. But he should not have gotten involved at all. Ray Lewis should have just sat back. He should have prayed in the locker room with them. If I was Ray once again... Ray Lewis, extricate yourself from the bullshit. Let it peter out on its own, because it will. So you know what, Ray? It's abundantly clear, as we feel passionately, palpably, what you're feeling about this as well, too. Uh, and we were just discussing it with uh, Stephen Espinoza of uh, Showtime, that this is a very weighty and emotional issue, to say the least. Uh, no, there's nothing weighty about it. It is emotional, because only emotional people are getting involved in this silly shit. But it is essential that we all keep track of it because it's being used for social um, engineering. And they're really just trying to embarrass everybody who does not conform to the emotional aspect of this ritual by calling them names and uh, trying to assail them into, co into conforming. Um, and so many people, unfortunately, are talking past what the issue is. Mm. And the only effective way to make progress on this is for us to truly listen to one another and more importantly to hear what the other person is saying. I hear you. I appreciate your passion and the fact that Boomer and uh, Phil both gave you this platform to speak about what is absolutely on your mind. You know what? There's no question that this kind of discussion and the story will continue as Ray has indicated from over in London. It will continue in locker rooms here stateside and stadiums and households across the country. Yeah, that's what you're hoping for because all this is is a bullshit narrative. All right. That's all it is. There, there is no solution. There is no conversation. Because there is no solution, right? So they're intuitive. They're, they are intuitively linked. There's no solution because there is no conversation, and there's no conversation because there is no solution. The solution is already there for so-called black people. That is, as I've stated already, um, self-determination, self-validation, and depending on oneself. You don't hear any of these so-called black people say we want to have our own police force. Never heard it once. But anyway. 